Every week, I like to sit down over a cheap, warm sandwich, which my producer usually steals at the end, and share ideas with a guest. This week, I spoke to the wonderful former British tennis player Annabelle Croft, and here is what we talked about. Cheers, Annabelle. Cheers. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Can I confess something? Yes. <laughs> It was a real choice between you and Gabriella Sabatini <laughs> as posters on my wall. Really? Well, I'm flattered about that because I, I adored Gabriella Sabatini. She was amazing, wasn't she? She was a good choice. I was sat there listening to you, uh, an interview you did where you were talking about phones and yeah. well-being and stuff like that and yeah. health. And I know you're very into different alternative yep. Passionate about it, yeah. Passionate. Can you tell me, I want to know a few things. One, um, what, are you, what, what is so brilliant about it? And yep. two, what can someone like me and my poor kids and everyone who is glued to these screens... Well, and myself included. I think what worries me, Lawrence, as everybody knows, is that we've sort of been dragged down this pathway for quite some time now, but it's kind of been a creep, hasn't it? Um, and I look back towards my childhood and even my playing days on the tour where we didn't have mobile phones. So, you know, for me to phone my parents after matches on the tour, it was suddenly, you know, you've got to go and find a phone box or do the reverse charges or buy a little card that you had to pay for. And you try and explain that to your kids. They can't even imagine it because they don't know life without this device. But what worries me is I'm now sort of of the opinion that a, it's unbelievably damaging to be constantly walking around with this thing in your pocket that is radiating off all sorts of signals. I don't know if you're the same, but when I'm holding my phone, sometimes if I've had too long a time on my phone, I can feel the waves going up my hand and I have to kind of yeah. shake it out. Um, but equally, I'm now starting to think, how many of our thoughts are actually our thoughts? Are we being engineered by AI? And I know Laura Dodsworth has been trying to get to the bottom of um, some of the, you know, the, the tools that have been used on us. I don't know the answer to that question, but it worries me that suddenly what up pops on my phone, oh, you know, you've been on your phone for four hours today. And I'm like, what? I thought I'd only just been sort of flicking through a few messages. Um, well, it does completely because you're any, every time that I flip across on my phone and the suggestive stories are always things that I've been talking about with somebody. So the phone is definitely listening to you and then oh, every, absolutely. And feeding back to you. But, but if, it, it's, I'm finding that you go to it, as, it's almost like a cigarette. You go to it for re relaxation, yep. but nicotine is proven to make you more anxious. Absolutely. And it's that sort of thing. So I just, I want to know as part of what yep. January's, you know, New Year's yeah, yeah. happiness can bring us, what we can do, both through complementary medicine and through, um, you know, anything to do well, with tech. Detoxing off the phone, for number one. I mean, I make rules now for myself that I certainly don't have it next to my bed. That's been a new thing for me, and I've just stopped having the phone anywhere near my bedroom. Uh, you know, I have to go downstairs now in the morning to pick it up if you have to. But before, it used to be next to my bed, and I think, well, how many rays um, going through your head when you're sleeping? But also, if I go for a run or go for a walk in the park, I definitely leave it behind now. I just, I want to be a free human being again. I want to be out in the park with the fresh air and not attached to this thing that is like a drug. And, and also, you know, if I go and buy a dress or something, <laughs> far too many of those, but if I go to buy something, I do wonder these days, did I buy it because I wanted it and because I suddenly saw this thing and I wanted it? Or has something been sent to me that has subliminally messaged me and then got me to buy that? I'm pretty sure it's number the two. Yeah, it will be the latter. Yeah. That it's, it will the data yeah. that's worth billions of pounds. Exactly. And that's very worrying, isn't it, for the future and where we're heading. So, and I do worry for the kids because once again, you know, I think back to my childhood, it was more free. Mm. And this way that the children are being engineered and all of us, we're so dependent on our phones. And because all of us, we're on these WhatsApp groups, we've met such amazing people on these groups. Um, it's hard to give that up, isn't it? Because for me to contact people in a forum and sort of start chatting and sharing ideas and debating in a forum, you'd have to keep going out to some hall, wouldn't you, if you wanted to do that? So it's a much easier way of communicating. How do we replace that? It's going to be very difficult if we just say, I'm just giving up my phone altogether. But it's, it's a dilemma in my head.
There should be no phone times. You were telling me about, um, because I feel completely drained now yeah. by the end of this well, year. You, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, Exhausted. And I'm thinking, what can I do? do well, you need a reboot. I need a reboot. Okay, what's yeah. a reboot? <laughs> I very much, but I mean, I've always been passionate about alternative health. And I found alternative health when I had um, a very small health issue where I had a cyst on an ovary. Just be straight. And I was going, going to the doctors, being told I was possibly going to have an operation. And one of my girlfriends, who is a trained homeopath, she said, no, 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 you need to go and see my homeopath. She's the most amazing woman. And uh, I did go and I thought, well, I was a bit sceptical, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. And of course, I sat in front of her. She's trained in Chinese medicine. She's obviously uh, very, very knowledgeable about medical things as well as alternative health. Anyway, she sort of started looking in her books and she gave me some Chinese herbs. She gave me some remedies. And she said to me, this will not be a quick fix. Uh, she said, but over a period of time, your symptoms will reduce. And absolutely everything that she said happened. And all of the pain, and I'm talking about near fainting regularly, just completely stopped over a period of time. So from my experience, I can't deny that that worked for me. And I know people who look at people who talk about homeopathy or alternative, think we're all nutters and we're just talking I absolute I gibberish. Think it's strange when people say, certainly in regards to Chinese medicine and stuff like that. I go thousands of years old. I, yeah, and <laughs> I can completely understand the Western desire for a quick fix. Yeah, you've got a headache, take paracetamol. I get it all, and I, and I think there's yeah. a place for all of it. But I don't know why people. Disparage him, sort of yeah, they just, alternative they just dismiss it. And yet, to me, it makes perfect sense because in homeopathy, from what I've learned, when you have symptoms, so whatever your symptoms are when you get ill, it's a really positive thing because the body is speaking. So if you have a rash that comes to the surface of the body, the skin is the biggest organ in the body. So when there's something going on internally, it will display itself on the outside of the skin and it's trying to get out. So if you're feeling sick, the body's so good at ridding itself of that poison that's inside you or diarrhea or whatever it is, you know, it, it, the body is very clever. So those symptoms are coming from the root cause. So if you can get to the root cause of what's causing those symptoms, then the, the symptoms will dissipate. And to me, that makes perfect sense. But what we're very good at in Western medicine is just a quick pill or something to suppress those symptoms. But it has it's just like a plaster sometimes that covers it up and it doesn't really get to what's causing the symptoms. And sometimes, you know, they say we're like an onion. And if you take off the layer in homeopathy, it might display another symptom. So you want to keep unlayering until you get to the very root of what's caused the original symptom. Because the body's very clever. If you hide it one way, it will follow a route to find another outing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it makes sense to me. So I've used homeopathy for many, many years. It's worked for me. It's worked for all my children. Touch wood, they didn't go to the doctors really very often. Um, and I think it's about taking responsibility for your own health. And I really... I just wish a lot of people would look at it and maybe have a look at some other alternatives sometimes than opposed to, well, they're swamping the NHS constantly. Well, so if they can get an appointment in the, yeah. in the first place. So would you, so, so what's your big passion and desire for 2023? Yeah. Um, definitely, as we've already talked about, to spend less time on my mobile phone, but equally to spend more time reading mm. because Actually, even through all of this crazy period of time that we've all been through for the last three years, I've definitely spent more time reading than I ever have before. But that's been really enlightening. Somebody once said to me, um, it was actually Nick Hudson, who you probably know. Yeah, who, I love worked with, Yeah, who worked with Panda. And he said, um, you know, books, if they've stood the test of time, and he says it's like a five, he gives it a five-year thing. If people are still talking about books after five years that it's been out in the marketplace, it's a good book. And you know, that's a good benchmark to, to go on. So, you know, I, I think what worries me going back to this digital thing is a lot of what's being put out there can just be removed, as we know. Yeah. And so history can be changed very quickly with the digital age coming. So actually going back to a little bit more of what was old fashioned and written down and thoughts and ideas that could be debated through through books, I think it's quite interesting. So I think my New Year's resolution is to read more yeah. and to stretch more. Stretch <laughs> We're more. all getting stiff. And 
when I said to you about rebooting the body, if you can open up those energy channels within you, um, the body can flow a little bit better. So I think rather than getting stiff and closing up all the channels, to be more fluid. I think that's good. And I also think that the, what happens when you read, and certainly not off a screen, because I've got a Kindle and it doesn't work yeah. when I read off no, Kindle. No. I have to actually have the book. There's yeah, something I like about the, the exercising yes, of the eyes and I, the formation of thoughts and yeah. the meditation. That it, yes. it, it, it's sort of reading can be a, a, a form of meditation. Oh, saying, definitely. And listening is less so. So no. you can, when you listen to an audio book. But yeah, I'm, I've never listened to an audio book, actually. I mean, I like the idea of um, using the time in the car these days. I've started switching off uh, Radio music. Radio <laughs> I've switched off certain things that I used to listen to, and now I do put talks on. And actually, I use that time, even if it's a 20-minute uh, journey to the supermarket. I think, well, I use that tw 20 minutes to learn something from some interesting talk or speaker or whatever. Um, and who's inspiring you at the moment who, that you've heard? that you've listened to? Oh, all sorts. I, um, I listen to lots of different scientists. I listen to um, podcasts. I mean, I can dip into diff different, different things altogether, but I would say the most interesting for me at the moment are the scientists. On, on all issues at the moment, or, or not on the, on the dreaded, dreaded C word? <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, I, I listen to as many scientists as I can and independent scientists. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course. Because that was missing. That's been missing, hasn't it? This, yeah. uh, this, which just, the, the takeover of social media has been quite interesting in yeah, terms of fact that these, a lot of these scientists who were poo-pooed are now Well, they're back. now coming back. Yeah. They're coming back onto Twitter. And I think, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Elon Musk does because he's now starting to allow some of these scientists back onto platforms. So, uh, they were some of the scientists they were, were or was following. So, um, I, yeah, I'm pleased to see that they are back and they might have a voice again. But I'm also interested to hear from independent journalists now who were on certain platforms, left them and have kind of found their own platforms. And that seems to be a new way forward for some of these people to have a voice. So I've sort of gone down a little bit of that route as well. I think that's the best route, isn't it? Because the mainstream media, whatever you think of it, one way or the other, has definitely not been straight with us over a variety of issues for a long time, not just the most recent stuff. So it's quite interesting that Elon has decided when he's re releasing this data and this information yeah. and these data dumps that he's releasing them to independent journalists like Barry Weiss and yeah. um, Matt Taibbi and Mike yeah. Paul Schellenberg. It is. It? It's been fascinating to watch it sort of unfolding in front of our eyes. And then, and then I see somebody put up a tweet that sort of says, well, hang on a minute, this guy owns Starlink. He's trying to put chips in our brain. And then he's trying to do 5G cars and what have you. Um, you know, where are we at with him? But I did watch that good documentary on him and it was fascinating. I don't know if you've seen I've it. It's a three part it. documentary on him. I've um, not seen it. Yeah, it was really fascinating, actually. I did find him completely compelling viewing and really intriguing. And I really do hope that he is for the greater good. I mean, it's I so really hope so. It's so hard to know, though. None, none is... of us know, but um, I do hope so. And um, certainly, uh, certainly an improvement on what came before. Yeah. And I you think... Know, it's a toxic environment. You've said, you've said it yourself, you know, that... Because I'm, I'm, my mum, who was a midwife and a nurse and a, a sister and a ward sister and all these things, she used to say that in, when she worked in the NHS, it, it was very holistic. They always used to look yeah. at the, someone's mental well-being as well as their physical well-being when they were doing it. I'm yeah. sure they still do in the NHS, yeah. but she said it was crucial to them. So, um, I'm fascinated to see what, what, what just freeing up the debate will do to platforms like Twitter, because my, um, Twitter thread, I know that uh, Meghan Markle is obviously much worse than mine, yeah. but um, it is pretty horrendous. So I try and I, tend not to read it. I think it's um, it takes a certain character to be able to cope with some of the attacks that come on social media. And just from my own little perspective, a couple of times when I put sort of daring things out oh, three, four years ago, and if you have a swamp and you've experienced this, it actually made me physically shake. Yeah. And so I thought, mm, I'm not really cut out for this. I, I will keep more of my views to myself, but, um, I've been admiring of people who just have this barrier around them that they don't care what other people think. Well, it's, but, a, it's a commitment not to self-censor, 
because yeah. the, you know that's where it comes from in me because I really do care that everyone has the right to have an opinion. Yeah, I feel like you because people are just going. Oh, I just can't say that because I, I can't deal with the pilot. Which is a shame saying. that that's where we're at. It's really bad for discussion, and if we allow it, it we allow censors to censor us. Yeah, externally. because I always believed when I grew up that you know I'm somebody who didn't have a proper education because I was out on the tour. I was off travelling from a very early age, so I sort of. Yeah, my education came through travel and playing tennis. But you know, you want to listen to different people's opinions to be able to form your own opinion. Yeah. And so that is the most important thing in life, I think, that you sit around even a dinner table with your family and you can debate across the table or you listen to other people's ideas and then, as I said, you form your own opinion. But I think there's been a lot of that lacking. Without that, it's impossible to form an opinion. If you think you're, yeah. ba- you're basically you you refer to it as narcissism, which um, it yeah. is essentially. If you don't listen to anybody else and you do live in the centre of your own universe, you are by very nature a narcissist. Yeah. So it's crucial that we reopen. Um, I think Elon's actually done. It's a philanthropic gesture. I'm sure he'll try and make money out of it, and I see a lot yeah. more ads on social media. Yeah. But I think he has gone. The free speech problem is the biggest one that we yeah. face in the West because otherwise we can't debate things like I don't know we didn't even get on to trans women in sport and mm. stuff like this but you know you can't even have a dissenting view and there was a video last night of a, a biological man shutting down a screening of a film I think in in Edinburgh yeah. you know we're not allowed this broad and rounded debate and we've got to have it. No, we do have to have it, and it's Especially healthy. Next year. Yeah, absolutely. And for young people to be able to critically think outside the box and to be able to form their own ideas and opinions. And we need to be respectful of other people's ideas instead of this terrible situation where, you know, through social media or people just ranting and shouting. And it does feel, Lawrence, that there's a lot of anger in the world. I mean, there's so much so anger much. and negativity. And that in itself creates very bad vibes everywhere. And you just want people to be, ultimately, we all want people to be happy, uh, be contented and contented human beings and positive and be respectful. Mm. And that should be the way forward, not all this anger. And because that's not good for anybody's health to have this much anger in the world. And it's it sort of feels like we're in the eye of a storm at the moment. That's how it feels. We're in a kind of a tornado. But we're going to get out of it in 2023. Annabelle, thank you so much for talking to me. Lovely to chat.